going down. Going up. Hey, hold up there. First time in good neighbor? You can't go walking around without insurance. Insurance? That's right. Insurance. Personal protection, like. You hand over everything you got in their pockets, or accidents start happening to you. Big, bloody accidents. Whoa, 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 time out. Someone steps through the gate the first time, they're a guest.
Lay off that extortion crap. What do you care? He ain't one of us. No love for your mayor, Finn? I said let him go. You soft, Hancock. You keep letting outsiders walk all over us. One day, there'll be a new mayor. Come on, man. This is me we're talking about. Let me tell you something. Now, why'd you have to go and say that, huh? Breaking my heart over here. You all right, brother? Your face. Something... happened? Like it? I think it gives me a sexy, king of the zombies kind of look. Big hit with the ladies. I'm a ghoul, you see? A lot of walking rad freaks like me around here. So you might want to keep those kinds of questions on the low burner next time. Good neighbors of the people, for the people. You feel me? Everyone's welcome. Good neighbor? That what you call this place? That's right. We cobbled this little neighborhood together out of the freaks and misfits that just wouldn't be accepted anywhere else. You'll see. You make enough friends here, you'll call this place home soon enough. So long as you remember who's in charge. Whoever this Brotherhood of Steel is, I'm not buying that we come in peace malarkey. Brotherhood of Steel, better stay out of good neighbor. All I'm saying. Oh, new face walks into my store. And you're not even screaming yet. Very polite. You let me know if anything catches your fancy. Did you say something about people screaming at you? That's right. Some newcomers have never seen a ghoul before. Can't handle a friendly face, I say. So you need some supplies? Got any work? I do, actually. Super mutants have taken over the old Boston Public Library. I got a lot of fond memories of that place from when I was a girl and... human. You get those lumbering brutes out of there, I'll pay you 200 caps. I don't think that's enough money to cover clearing out a whole building. You got a good point. We'll make it... Uh, 250 caps. It's not just the cost of ammunition. Danger means doctor's fees. Yeah, yeah, all right. How about 300 caps when it's done? Deal? Anything more you can tell me about the library? A lot of those pre-war buildings have automated security. Robots, turrets, that kind of thing. A lot of computers, too. Hope you take the job. You might not believe this, but I was a shy child. Books were like my best friends growing up. You got a deal, Daisy. Thanks. Hey, while you're there, could you return this book for me? It's from the library. Don't even ask how long it's been overdue. Need a place to stay? Try Hotel Rexford. What, you need something to take the edge off? Fred Allen, Hotel Rexford. He'll hook you up. If you're here to pawn something, don't bother telling me it's an heirloom. I'm probably older than whatever it is you're selling. Sure. Let's take a look. Remember, no returns, exchanges, or death threats.
What's up? You're bad. Can't get enough looks of this lovely figure of mine. <laughs> no? <laughs> Guess you'll just... What a day, huh? You step through the gate, you got balls. Well, hello. Everything here is guaranteed to injure, maim, or kill at your discretion. Except me. I only kill when I want to. Who... what are you? I'm a woman, baby. Can't you tell? Oh, of course you are. It's just... all those metal plates. You're a robot, right? A very womanly robot? Designation, Assaultron. Designed to provide a variety of security-related tasks to the modern man. Runtime conclusion. Why work for the man when you can work for yourself? New designation. K-L-E-O. Cleo. Fully independent small business owner. Robot enough for you, smooth talker? Now what are you buying? Your... An Assaultron? That's what my makers called me. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm a woman. And I run a store that sells very large guns. So what'll it be? So what kind of weapons do you have? Anything that can kill a man, I sell. Except suicidal depression. That is unfortunately not packageable. Now, are we doing business? Let's see what you have. Let's get you outfitted, killer. Smell that? My light, That's freedom. <laughs> Everyone's welcome and good neighbor. Even me. Diamond City radio signal comes in loud and clear here in Good Neighbor. And that Travis? Man, he got good. Yeah? Peace, brother.
Well, well, Mr. Valentine. I thought you had forgotten about the Lomi. May have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. Hmm. Amari's downstairs, you big flirt. Here for Amari. She's downstairs. Hey, Irma. Whatever you and Nick are up to, I don't need to know. Just don't let the big metal softy hurt himself, all right? Dr. Amari? Yes. I take it this isn't a social call. You're the one who can extract memories from a brain, right? Normally, we only allow our clients to experience their own memories. Now, what's this all about? We need a deep dig, Amari, but it's not gonna be easy. The perp, Kellogg, is already cold on the floor. Are you too mad? Putting aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse, you don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function. Isn't there some way to make this work? This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this, and so do we. Fine. I'll take a look, but no guarantees. Do you have it with you? How much of the brain do you need exactly? That is not an encouraging question. I suppose I'll have to make do with whatever you can find. Could you say that like Dr. Frankenstein? Ego, fetch me the brain. No? No, I will not. Now. Do you have it? Here's what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait, that's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Ah, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. So the brain is still good, right? Possibly. There's no sign of decay, so the tech is probably preserving the tissue, injecting some kind of compound to keep it stable. But there's no way to access the memories inside without a compatible port. You're talking about me, right? I'm an old synth. If the Institute built me out of similar parts, we might have an in. There could be long-term side effects. I don't know where to even begin with listing the risks. Don't bother. I don't need to hear them. Plug me in, Doc. You really think this will work, Nick? No idea. But we got a missing kid on the line. That's worth the risk. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Valentine. Just sit down. If I start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? Let's see here. I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. Static. I, I, I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. How do you lock memories? The implant is encoding all the mnemonic activity in the hippocampus. Think of it like computer encryption. And we don't have the password. Let's see. 
A single mind wouldn't be able to crack it. But what if we used to? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory loungers. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host, while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. Any idea what I'm gonna see in there? I have no clue. But considering we only have a single piece of the medial temporal lobe and not the whole brain, I doubt it'll be cohesive. Nick and I are gonna share a mind? Yeah, I'm not gonna see him in any compromising positions, am I? Yeah, if a smart mouth was all it took to solve problems, we would have found your son by now. Um, uh, no. You won't have to worry about that. The only memories you'll access are the ones in the implant. All right. Let's get started. Just sit down over there and keep your fingers crossed. See you on the other side. Just sit in the memory lounger when you're ready. Initiating brainwave migration between the transplant and the host. Mnemonic activity coming from the transplant. It's degenerated, but it's there. We are going to load you into the strongest memories we can find. They might not be stable. Just hold on. Can you hear me? Ah, good. The simulation appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. There. This is the earliest intact memory I can find. Remember, you are experiencing these memories as Kellogg. This may prove disorienting at first. All five states have now signed on, which means that as of this moment, we are all citizens of the new California Republic. I'm sure that's going to take some getting used to for a lot of people. Mm, what a joke. What's it mean, Mom? Nothing, Connie. People like to talk and hope someone else is going to keep them safe. The teacher at school said the NCR would bring back the good old days, like before the big war. Don't you listen to that twaddle. I'm going to stop singing you if that's what they're teaching you. I'm going out. Where the fuck did you put my boots? Listen to me, Connie. You take this. You're old enough. You're the man of the family now. It's your job to protect us. Your father's useless. But you won't turn out like him. You're a good boy. And all that on the radio. All useless talk. The only thing that will protect you in this world is that gun in your hands. You need to learn to use it if you're going to survive. I... I will, Mom. I promise. We'll let you down. You've always been my good boy. 
This doesn't seem to be what we're looking for. There appears to be another intact memory close to you in temporal sequence. There. Try that one. It's gonna be fine. You'll see. But we don't know anybody here. And now, with the baby? Come on, Sarah. You gotta give it a chance. I finally got steady work with a good outfit. Nothing like that in the NCR these days. No, I, I'm not saying this was a mistake. I, I'm just... Are you sure these guys know what they're doing? They seem kind of green. I know. But that's where I come in. Just wait. In a few years, I'll be running my own crew. As soon as I make the connections I need. Then I can give you anything you want. And little Mary, too. I never worried about you before. Must be my mama instincts kicking in. <laughs> Who knew I had those, huh? Come on, you're great with her. And you don't need to worry about me. Most of it's just running security for the she. A lot of standing around, looking tough. Well, they sure picked the right person for that job. Listen, it's gonna be great here. See this? This is what's gonna keep you and Mary safe. I promise. I know, Connie. I'm sure we're gonna be really happy here. We are. You'll see. That's okay. I got her. Let's keep looking. I'll connect you to the next intact memory. Whatever made me think that a guy like me should have a daughter? No, I, I never deserved her. Not for one second. It's gonna be fine. You'll see. I was the worst thing that ever happened to her. If she'd never met me, she'd have stayed in the hub, maybe hooked up with someone who didn't kill people for a living. Probably been happier than she was with me. Almost certainly lived longer. The thing about happiness is, is you only know you had it when it's gone. I mean, you, you may think to yourself that you're happy, but uh, you don't really believe it focus on that petty bullshit or next job or whatever. It's only looking back by comparison with what comes after that you really understand that's what happiness felt like. But we don't know anybody. I thought San Francisco was my chance to start fresh. That was the hot shit. The gunslinger from the hub rolling into town with the world at my feet. Everybody knew I was the one who'd shot Valdez, and I could write my own ticket to any outfit in town. It all worked out pretty damn well, for a while. Be here, and now with the baby. Whatever made me think that a guy like me should have a daughter? No, I, I never deserved her. Not for one second. That makes it official, folks. Final Dad was either drunk or not around. I guess he must have run with one of the raider gangs, but I never really knew what he did. Don't know why Mom was with him. Maybe at some point in his life, he wasn't a complete asshole. People always hoping for something better. They usually end up with something worse. Mom knew how it was. She wasn't soft, but uh, she loved me in, in her way. And she protected me from Dad. 
That cost her more than a few beatings. I never knew what happened to her after I left. I didn't want to know. Not then. I was such a dummy back then. What did I know about how the world worked? I think now she wanted me to kill him. I should have. Instead, I ended up running away. I told myself I wanted to find somewhere out from under the thumb of the NCR and all their rules. But really, I was running from the guilt of not protecting her from Dad. Yeah, it doesn't matter now, though. Come on, Sarah, you... How did you think this was gonna end, Kellogg? <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us, and we wouldn't fuck with you? Just so you know, they died like dogs. And you weren't there to help them. I found another memory to try. I'll connect it. How did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us, and we wouldn't fuck with you? Mind if we uh, sit down? Suit yourself. So, um, I hear you'll take care of people's problems. Is that right? If you pay me. Oh, we'll pay you. And, uh, you'll do this all by yourself? That's right. We pay you when the job is done. Is that okay? That's the way you want to do it? So who do you want dead? Well, it's like this. There's his family. Lives down the creek a ways. Well, we seem to be getting closer. Try this next one. I didn't care where I was going. Ended up mostly wandering east. Getting as far away from San Francisco as I could, maybe. Mind if... There's always someone. I wanted someone else dead. Sometimes just roughed up, but uh, dead was usually what they wanted. Sometimes they thought they could cheat me. That was usually only when I first arrived somewhere. Didn't matter to me. They just took it as part of the job. A little extra thrown in for free. I always got paid in the end. One way or another. I don't remember much from that time. It all kind of blends together. It was almost always a bar, though. That's universal. Sit down. Suit yourself. Mr. Kellogg, I'm glad you decided to meet with me. So. You're with the Institute. I wanted to see for myself if you really existed. We do, as you can see. What do you want? It's come to my attention that you've been rather disruptive of our operations lately. This must stop. I do what people pay me to do. If that's a problem for you, I can see only one way out. 
And what's that, Mr. Kellogg? If I'm working for you, there's no more problem. From what I hear, you can afford me. I don't think you fully understand the situation you're in. I think I do. Very well. B-748, initiate. Hmm. Impressive. We may have something to talk about after all. Getting warmer. One of these has got to tell us something. We are running out of brain here. Ah. Ah, there's one that looks mostly intact. Connecting now. Mr. Kellogg. I finally ended up in the Commonwealth. I kinda ran out of road. Plus, I'd come to terms with life. I wasn't gonna be stupid enough to get mixed up with caring about other people again. It was just me against the world. And the world had it coming. I'm glad you... The first synths weren't all that impressive. I'm good, but I'm not that good. But the Institute could always make more, and kept making them better each time. They still give me the creeps, but... You have to get used to them if you want to work with the Institute. You decided to meet with me. So, you heard all sorts of rumors about the Institute. But I figured they were just a convenient boogeyman for anything bad that ever happened. They were real, all right. They didn't know anything about operating on the surface. Relied on their synths for everything. They had the resources I needed, and I had the expertise they needed. Turned into a permanent arrangement, which suited me just fine. You're with the Institute. Manual override initiated. Cryogenic stasis suspended. If all computers are still working, that's good. I was now the Institute's main operator in the Commonwealth. If they needed something done, they came to me. It wasn't usual for anybody from the Institute to come along on a mission, so this one stood out. They didn't know then who it was we were grabbing from the vault. Of course, neither did they. Not really. The eggheads never like taking orders from a dirty, contaminated degenerate like me. But they needed me, and I made sure they knew it. Second group. I never knew why we didn't just refreeze the rest of them. But we had our orders. <laughs> I guess the old man didn't want so many loose ends. Too bad he left alive the one person he shouldn't have. The logs. Even then, I knew it was a mistake leaving him alive. I understood that kind of revenge. No one better. But I was cocky enough to assume I could handle some soft, pre-war vault dweller. Even if he somehow got thawed out. At least I know those Institute bastards will soon get what's coming to them, too. If he could take me out, they won't be able to hide from him for long. Hopefully it's all... I'm glad I didn't have to kill the kid. I'm not saying I haven't done it, but, uh... I never liked to. And yeah, I guess it did remind me of uh, her. Yeah, I'm a cold-hearted bastard for sure, but, uh, still human. Better this way, though. Better than taking her kid and leaving her alive. Justin, find it. Pod C6, down the hall near the end.
This is the one. Here. Open it. Almost. Everything's going to be fine. Come here. Come no, here, wait. baby. No, no. I've got him. Let the boy go. I'm only going to tell you once. I'm not giving you Sean! God damn it. Get the kid out of here and let's go. At least we still have the backup. Cryogenic sequence reinitialized. What's the holdup? I'm almost finished, Kellogg. I just need to confirm. Come on, come on, come on. All right, we're good. I'm, uh, I'm sorry you had to go through that again. I found another intact memory. Whenever you're ready. Initiated. Manual override initiated. Cryogenic stasis suspended. Vault computers are still working. That's good. Checking through the logs. Hopefully it's all... Just... find it. Pod C6. Down the hall near the end. This is the one. Here. Open it. <laughs> is it over? Is that your son? This appears to be a very recent memory, so good news, I think. Days you're gonna get your head blown guess, off just barging uh, in here like that. Well, play some music. Minimizing my exposure to civilians is a priority. Forget I said anything. So what's the big crisis this time? New orders for you. One of our scientists has left the institute. Left? As in? He's gone rogue. Name's Dr. Brian Virgil. We know he's hiding somewhere in the glowing sea. Here's his file. This whole setup in Diamond City was part of some elaborate plan of the old man's. Seems obvious now that we were bait for our friend from the vault. Timing couldn't have been an accident. It's not how the old man works. I wonder if he outsmarted me in the end. Another loose end tied up. It wasn't my idea to settle down with the kid in the middle of Diamond City. I thought it was a terrible idea, actually. But it was one of the old man's pet projects, so here we were. Me and the kid, like a happy little family. I ended up kind of liking it. A reminder of what my life might have been if things had turned out differently. But there's no going back. I knew it was just temporary. It'll be back to normal business before too long. The new breed of synths could easily pass as human. Some of them did. But the coursers, they weren't built to blend in. They were killing machines, pure and simple. Smarter, stronger, and faster than almost any real human. I'm just glad they were always on my side. 
Wow. Some heads are gonna roll for this. Capture and return, or just elimination? Elimination. He was working on a highly classified program. No kidding. One of the top bioscience boys? Damn. So, I guess you're taking the kid back with you. Affirmative. Your only mission is to locate and eliminate Virgil. You're taking me home to my father? Yes. Stand next to me and hold still. Okay. X688. Ready to relay with Sean. Bye, Mr. Kellogg. I hope I see you again soon. Bye. Teleportation. Now it all makes sense. Nobody's found the entrance to the Institute because there is no entrance. Let me pull you out of there as soon as you're ready. I don't know what kind of side effects the procedure might have had. No one's ever done this before. How do you feel? Oh. Am I okay? Are you seeing anything bad? Don't be alarmed, but I honestly don't know what to look for. As I said before, this is uncharted territory, but your neural and physiological readings have returned to normal. From a medical standpoint, you're fine. Are you ready to talk about what happened in there? There's more than one person who knows about the Institute. W Virgil, th that scientist who escaped. I didn't know Institute scientists could defect. This changes everything. He could answer all sorts of questions. Where did the memory say he was? The glowing sea? That can't be right. No one would risk going there. Not even to hide. Why? What makes the glowing sea so dangerous? The name says it all. Radiation. So much that nothing there could possibly live. Nothing pleasant. Navigating radioactive hazards is nothing new. But the glowing sea can kill a man in seconds. That's why it doesn't make sense. Virgil fleeing into that hell. The exposure alone. That's why he's there. To make the Institute think twice about following him. That must be it. He's using the radiation in the glowing sea like a shield, or a cloak. A way to throw them off and be at an advantage. If Virgil found a way to survive there, you'll have to do the same. If you're going to follow him. How do I fight that much radiation, Doctor? There are chemical compounds. Radax, Radaway. You'd need as much as you could carry. Maybe more. A sealed environment suit would be great if you could find one. Or maybe one of those suits of power armor? That would be perfect. Oh no. I'm not going there. That's crazy. And plunging into a dead man's memory wasn't crazy? You've already done the impossible. Who's to say God won't let you do it again? Look, think it over if you have to, but it's the only path I can offer. Through the glowing sea to Virgil. By the way, I unplugged Mr. Valentine first. Removed the implant while you were waking up. He's waiting for you upstairs. Dr. Amari. Be careful of the radiation. The glowing sea isn't a place to be caught unprepared. Hey. What you got for me? You hungry? These always keep me going. Your thoughts? You know, you are some kind of dedicated. I wouldn't want to share a beer with Kellogg, let alone a brain. Nothing else for now. Sure.
The memory den's not accepting new clients right now, sweetheart. Irma. Oh, enjoying yourself and good neighbor? It's a heck of a town, ain't it? You like the decor? My business partner hates it. Says she's not the fun type. Hey. Good neighbor's crazy. Thefts, murders, worse. Sometimes you just gotta escape a little to make it through the day. <laughs> escape? What do you mean? Reliving old memories. Like Thanksgiving, 2071. Mom made a 12-pound turkey. And then we all listened to the Silver Shroud vs. Captain Cosmos. Even Pa was there. You ever listen to the Silver Shroud? Huh. <laughs> That's what we need. No matter how bleak things got, he saved the day. What can you tell me about the Shroud? He's from the radio shows. I've listened to all 419 episodes. And the holiday special. He's the best. Better than Grognak and Man to Man combined. That sounds familiar. You'd remember him if you heard his show. They're the best detective shows in the whole world. What if the Silver Shroud was real? With his black trench coat and gleaming silver submachine gun. I got a plan to bring him to life. So we can fight bad guys and give the rest of us a symbol of something better. Sure, Kent. You have a plan, all right. You really gotta rain on this guy's picnic. I know how it sounds. I've built my own custom machine gun. Even better than the one in the show. But to make this work, I still need the most important piece. The genuine Silver Shroud costume herself. And they actually got one here in Boston. They made it for the TV show. Will you help? I might do it, if you make it worth my while. I can give you some caps up front. Just promise you'll help me. Do you really need the costume? With the gun, I'm just another armed hooligan. But if the Silver Shroud came to life and helped people, it would give everyone hope. I'll get the costume for you. You're gonna do this? For real? Before the bombs fell, they were filming the Silver Shroud pilot over at Hubris Comics. So that's where you'll find it. You're the best. Kent. Be careful. The comic book store's in a real bad part of town. Hey, Valentine. Hope you got what you were looking for inside my head. 
<laughs> that was right. I should have killed you when you were on ice. You want to try for round two? Let's go! What? What are you talking about? You sounded like Kellogg just then. Did I? Huh. Kamari said there might be some mnemonic impressions left over. Anyway, I feel fine, so let's get going. Or I could head back to Diamond City, since you've got company already. We have to head into the Glowing Sea. Any advice? Hmm. I'm a synth, so radiation isn't much of an issue for me, but an old suit of power armor might just be the guardian angel you're looking for. That or you could buy up all the rad X and rad away you can find from any chem dealer who's got it in stock. There's something wrong with you, Nick. I don't want you with me. I told you I'm fine. But I get it. Going through Kellogg's brain was a doozy for both of us. I'll be in Diamond City when you've had time to cool off. Sounds like Ellie needs to talk to us. We should head back to the office next chance we get. <laughs>